Hi guys, Adam here as usual, hope we're all well. I thought I'd do a quick video just showing you kind of um, how to restring the Strandberg Borden OS7 because when I first came to restring it, I looked at it and I was like, I, I, don't, I don't understand. Also remember when I did the review video, I found this box of Allen keys and tools and I thought, what is all of this stuff? I have no idea. So yeah, I just thought we'd Restring the Strandberg. Oh, well, out. Restring the Strandberg and talk about just kind of whatever comes to mind, I guess. First, apologies for the probably dodgy camera angles. Get this key, the biggest kind of T key. Move your soldering gear out the way. Let's take some of the stiffness out of them tuners. Now resonant that is, I mean it is on a wooden table but honestly the guitar's vibrating, it sounds gorgeous. And what you do, you continue to unscrew these at the bridge and eventually they will come off. I'm sure these will work in any order, but I like to keep them in order so I know that one's always my lowest string. Also, you can see, <laughs> let's see if you can, see if I can kind of get a zoom in or something on there. Um, bits of my skin and stuff, because these get really tight and the plastic's reasonably sharp. So I've had the Strandberg for about four months now, I think, three or four months. Can't remember exactly when I got it, and I'm still really, really loving it. Everything about it, man, it looks awesome, feels awesome, plays awesome, it sounds awesome. As long as you're going kind of with an open mind, and you're not expecting like a Les Paul or a Strat or something like that, you're gonna really enjoy, really enjoy the Strandberg. It's just an incredible feat of engineering, in my opinion. Almost done taking these off. Right, and you can see the strings, maximum slackness. So then what you want to do is find, which key is it? I think it's this one. Do, do, do. No, that one's too small. There's literally like five or six tools in here. Find this key and just start undoing the, uh, What's effectively the, the lock and tuners, I guess, a lock and nut. Again, apologies, I don't think this bit's kind of in, in shot, so I apologise for that. Just give me a quick little twist. And then I like to take them out just enough. Again, I like to do them, because I use such a thick gauge for the low B, I have to take that one more or less fully out, but I like to do it just enough so that they come out, and then literally, this is great, no snipping required. You just kind of pull them through the back end of the bridge like so. Oh, you try not to break stuff. Um, yeah. Totally fine. In fact, that low B is totally fine because I use such a thick gauge again. The low B normally lasts for several string changes. To be honest, I could probably get away with most of the low strings lasting several string changes, but I don't like the you know the, the difference in, in brightness and stuff like that that then creates. In case you're curious while I'm doing this, setting the action is also incredibly easy on this guitar. Um, here, kind of at the, at the the top end of the bridge, there's a little slotted kind of screw, I guess, kind of nut. 
just takes a normal straight screwdriver and you just literally twist in small turns and then that raises the strain kind of up and down. I've got it set perfectly for me. I don't like a megalo action, I like it. I don't want to say medium, it's probably somewhere in between medium and low, but I also really like that you can adjust the action per string as you can on a lot of guitars because I think I like the action higher for the low B string and then obviously lower as we work our way towards the high B and high E string. Just kind of tying them up a little, put them to one side. Right, so we've got all the strings off, don't be alarmed that these kind of little bits come in and out, that's totally fine. What I like to do is just give it a quick wipe with a clean cloth, I couldn't find a clean cloth so I'm <laughs> using a slightly dirty one. The only thing I haven't quite got away with yet, I do like these pickups actually now I'm used to them, get the most out of them, I do like them, but I don't like to see how kind of loose they are in the body with the springs means even the slightest bit of sort of downward pressure on them, they're moving all over and it's a when you sort of palm mute quite heavily like I do, it's a little bit of a little bit of a ball ache. See the dirt coming off there already. I am a very sweaty character. Um, yeah. So I tend to wear away metal and stuff like that tends to get worn away very, very quickly in my hands. Strandberg have some cool videos on sort of basic maintenance and basic treatment of the guitar as well, but it's a maple board. I don't want to, I don't want to overly treat it. You know what I mean? I'm just going to give it a quick sort of little polish. I want a bit of dirt on there. I want a bit of character. Don't mind a few, a few dints. You know what I mean? Get that in there. Let's give it a slight bit of a sort of spit polish, really, with this cloth. I have got some. <laughs> Yeah, just checking. I don't actually have anything suitable for for kind of maple maple boards. I'll have to get hold of some oh some cleaner or some polish of some kind that's suitable wood treatment that's suitable for maple boards. I'm going to look at the Dario products, but if anyone has a, a recommendation for kind of like a, a fingerboard oil, I guess um, I've always used Gurlitz, but I don't have one for for maple. So anyone got any recommendations? Please let us know about them. There we go, quick little sort of spit polish on there. And what I do like is this uh, Carnauba wax. Again, this is a girl, it's brand Carnauba wax. Let's get a little bit on there and just kind of buff it. Sort of into the body. You can see it just brings out the colour a little bit. Puts like a nice kind of, almost like a wax kind of skin on the wood. Just kind of treat it slightly. These, you do not want to lose these. These are tiny, tiny little pin in the arse things that go in the locker nut that the screw clamps down on. You do not want to lose that. I just kind of buff the extra off again with this, with this cloth. Get some of the dust out of there, but you guys know I'm not particularly precious. I don't mind if it has a few dings and stuff like that. It's a working guitar, you know what I mean? It's getting played all the time. It's not hanging on a wall looking pretty. Plus, even if it's beat up a little bit, it's still going to look mega pretty. Some of the dog air over there. And then, that's, oh shit. And then that's basically it. We just come to the restringing. So I'm going to just have a quick double check of this little B. The low B's been in there about a month, he's totally fine, he can come back in. So, this bit is an absolute pain in the arse. So all you do is thread the string through there like such. This is a 64 gauge Dodario string. Kind of a heavy guitar string or a light, a light bass string if you would like to look at it that way. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get a splash of this wax. Yeah, a tiny little amount. I'm gonna just quickly wipe the fingerboard down with that. I think that'll give it a nice, just a nice little sheen, nice little polish until we come up with something better. Right, where was I? So as I was saying, yeah, 64 gauge, the heavy bass, uh, heavy guitar string or, or light kind of bass string. Pull that in as far as it can go there. 
rest it over the, the bridge and then through the nut at the bottom, through the through the lock and nut at the bottom, over the zero fret, over the sort of plastic or tusk nut. Get our little lock and nut bit, uh, sorry, our little tuner. Place that over the edge like that. Just start to lightly twist, just get that on there. This horrible little metal bit, drop that in. Put your screw in and just lightly thread that in. And just do it, it doesn't need to be mega tight, you don't want to risk damaging anything, but just kind of hand tight, a bit of, bit of thumb pressure into it to do the job. And then as you turn this, it lengthens the string and tightens it. I get it to sort of a, a reasonable degree of tightness, so it's kind of an audible note. Um, and that's about, that's about it. Excellent, so um, the Dario XL nickel wounds. These are my string of choice. I've used a Dario for a long time. Awesome strings, great tone, nice sort of bright snappy tone. Um, lasted a good decent while as well considering I'm very sweaty and my sweat's quite acidic. Um, so kind of cheap strings get ruined very very easily and a lot of other brands tend not to work like the Dario's do for us. Um, yep, so this is it. So the gauge we've got, you can probably read it there on the screen. I like a 64 for the low B. A lot of people tend to use a, f a 54, but I like I've I've turned it right up to a 64. Recommendation of a of, of a friend of mine, and I really really like that. I like the extra thickness. I like the extra the extra tension. Um, it just it it just works for me. You know what I mean? You experiment, but I find that absolutely works for me. I think considering seven strings have been around for a while, I don't think anyone's really come up with the optimum gauge. I know Strandberg do sell strings with what this is, the optimum gauge for Strandberg. But I think it's so, you know, string choice is so unique, player to player. Um, you really just have to sort of experiment for what works for you. So we've got a 64 for the low B, and then we've got a 46, or, you know, it's dropping sort of point twenty almost. We've got a 46 for the brass, um, for, the, for the low E. But I sometimes always do as well, so most of the time, my seven string is in standard seven string tuning, which is B, E, A, D, G, B, E. But I do sometimes, we uh, sometimes put it in drop A. What I sometimes also do as well is I'll have this uh, this E string, or what should be the lower E string, I'll put that into drop D. So I'll have B, D, A, D, G, B, D, E. And that's kind of a trick that the bass player in the band showed me that he uses on his five string bass. And it just means all of the stuff we play in, in drop D is just so much so much easier and it means i'm not having to switch between six and seven string guitars kind of mid practice or or mid set or whatever you know so just uh that might be something that's worth worth trying so there's our b and our e strings in place next up where's he gone is uh is the red one which i have at gosh 36 is that word gorge or gauge or answers on a postcard down below in the comments? I use I guess it depends who I'm talking to. If I'm just talking to you guys, I'll just say gorge or I'm not bothered. If I'm trying to be posh, I'll say gauge. Gauge 46 string. I realise what I've done now and it's really upset as I've put the wrong <laughs> I'm gonna have to undo it guys. You should have you should have given me the heads up there. I put the wrong nut on there. That was meant to be me high. Yay, this one is me low E. Come on, guys, taking your eye off the ball. I'm glad I realised before it was too late, I would have been really upset. So just pull lightly. You don't want to pull mega, pull a string mega tight. You want some slack. Pull lightly through the nut as you start to apply. Um, Tension on the, the sort of turn screw, the tuner. Again, just a bit of thumb pressure, lock the string in place, tighten. Yeah, somewhere there is good. 
Then we got our black, oh, black string. Which is, for those who don't know what I'm talking about, Daddario are really handy. They put um, the kind of colour code, the, the ball ends for you for, you know, if you're not overly familiar with, with string gauges, gorges, etc. They colour coded for you and write it on the packaging, which is really useful. Um, yeah, so we've got here at uh, gauge 26. Again, a little bit of pressure. Start to screw. Then we got who's next? It's green, which should be our 16. And again, just repeating the process. Through the lock and nut at the bottom. That washing and whirring sound in the background is uh, a <laughs> the washing machine. I'm off work today, so it's chores day. And finally, we got purple and silver. Purple is our 11 gauge. If you haven't noticed what I'm doing either down here, so it's really difficult to get the string out. I've just found putting the Allen key in alongside it and just. Kind of lifting the end of the string up with the Allen key, just kind of takes it above the above the saddle quite nicely. If you've got big fat clumpy fingers like I have, again we're just repeating the process. So stringing guitars, restringing guitars, and setting them up is one of those necessary evils for me. I don't mind restringing them, but when it comes to setups, oh, it's just an absolute ball ache, isn't it? Um, got a mate of mine who does sort of pro, pro setups, so I normally take them to him if they're absolutely desperate. If I need any serious work doing like fret dresses or anything like that, I tend to use a guy called DS Guitars. Double stock guitars in in Whitley Bay. He studied at the, I believe, Guadalupe School of Luthery in the US. I believe that's what it's called. So he knows his he knows his stuff. Repeat the process for the high E, which is a, a nine gauge string. And then that's it, guys. We're all done. Get it locked at the nut. Jobs are good, and so any questions, direct them to Strandberg and not I. <laughs> It's about as much as I know about it, no, just kidding, any questions, get in touch guys, I'm going to string this up, I'm going to finish polishing the back side of the guitar, and then we're ready to rock, I hope this has been useful, Strandberg Borden OS7 Restring, let us know if you have any other ways of doing it, any other tips to speed up the process, etc, Till next time guys, take it easy.